Hello YouTube, this is Skip, coming to you live, straight out of Real House 6 Aquatic Kennels. Before we get started with part 4 of this video series, I would like for you to direct your attention to the description already below this video where you will find links to purchase books and other Real Hard Sickness merchandise. In addition, there's a link to my other YouTube channel, The Ambassador of Aquatic Life, where I discuss aquatic and other hobby related issues. So smash that subscribe button. Now for you guys that's just tuning in to this video series, make sure you check out part one through three as things really start to heat up here in part four where we are going to discuss the difference between the Amphilopus labiatum's red devil and the Centronellum's Midas. First I want to talk a little bit about the history I've had with these two species. Growing up in the early 80s me and my childhood friends have always frequently visit the local pet stores to purchase what we call red devils. And I started to notice a difference between the ones I purchased and some of my other friends, so-called red devils. Some of us had some with huge big lips and then some of us had some with huge knuckle humps and no big lips. This is a small rim and then some of us had some that was in between which back then I was calling my devils. And the only reason why I was calling them my devils is because a local pet store owner, Larry, explained to me that there were two separate species, the labiatum's red devil and the centronellums. And I used to wonder, what, what in the world is a centronellums? And then he showed me something that was in his pet store, and I saw the difference. The high arcing body, flat face, no big lips. So I was wondering, well, everybody just calling them red devils all the time. And you know this true, people. Stop me when I stop telling the truth. Everyone back in those days was calling anything that looked like a centronellums or a red devil, whether it's bard, a blue devil, or a black devil, they was calling it a devil. That's the bottom line. That is real talk. So now that you have some pestle owners purchasing centronellum mitis from distributors labeling them red devils, you have a problem with the public crossing the two species and that's how I came up with the name my devil so now that we got that out the way let's get into the science and documentation and demonstrable evidence that proves that these are two separate species first of all pharyngeal jaw experts had did an analysis and it shows that the red devil's pharyngeal jaw is different from the Midas which is obvious this by visual in addition both species have two separate diets. One diet consists of more of a veggie protein matter, and the other is more of a meaty protein matter, considering that the labiatum's red devil love to pound crustacean with those boxing glove-like lips against the rock crevices. So I will have to ask, how does some experts say that the labiatums or the centronella mitis evolve from one another? when they both occupy the same territory in the same space. It just doesn't make sense to me. Nature has already perfected both species. That's why I consider them two separate species. Now to further explain my case, check out this centronellum skull. Look at the mouth region. Nothing like a labiatum's red devil. Come on people, really? Why through speciation? with Mother Nature just decide to, okay, we're going to just let both species exist in the same waterways if one came from the other. On top of that, the labiatus red devil body structure is so drastically different from the centronella mitis, it has to be considered a standalone species. Just look at them. Come on. You can't honestly say with this demonstrable evidence, visual evidence, that these are two of the same species, it's too much of a drastic difference. The labiatum's red devil has evolved different enough to be considered its own species and have that respect. So allow me to give a new analogy 
similar to the one I did in part one of this video series. Starting with these reptiles. Because in my opinion, red devils and mitas are mistaken like crocodiles and alligators are. They're always mislabeled. People get the both confused because they look so similar to each other. But make no mistake about it. These are two separate species. One is an alligator and one is a crocodile. And they got distinct features to let you know that they're two separate species. Just like the red devil and the mitas. The crocodile had a long pointy snout and the alligator have a round blunt snout. Blunt snout. But make no mistake about it. They are two separate species. And it's funny how like the mitas and labianums, they're always mislabeled or mistaken for one another. Even though they both have those unmistakable physical characteristics that let you know they're two separate species. Now, as I finish up this video, I know that this debate will go on and on for years and years to come. But I just wanted to give you my take on it. I wanted to share my opinion on this discussion and give you demonstrable evidence and documentation to back it up. Now, if you disagree with me, you can leave your comments in the comment section and share your documentation to back up your opinion and your views. Because I'm always open for dialogue, especially informative dialogue. So stay tuned, because in part five of this video series, we're going to discuss the elusive Ampelopus hogaboomera. And the reason why I say that, because this is a very controversial amp species, mainly because of the mysterious mystery behind its existence and its history so with that said this skip i'm out